Right, everyone, welcome back to another AFCON Daily. Um, it seems a while since we started doing these. The tournament is well underway. First couple of games in Algeria's group. It's never straightforward. And to talk through it today, we've got Mohamed. How are you, mate? Uh, thank you very much for having me on to the show. Uh, I'd like to say salam alaikum to everyone listening. And uh, yeah, I, I'm a bit more... I'm, a, I'm better today. I'm better today. Um, I've let the results sink in. And yeah, I'm a bit more calmer. So yeah, good. How are you? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not so much over it. I was so excited for this game and thinking this is the moment we don't mess about. We've done the warm up training camp. Here we go. Even at half time, things were looking rosy. We yeah. just can't seem to get over the line, mate, can we? Yeah, I think that's the problem of Algeria, man. We seem to, you know, have a really good game. Um, we'll go one up and then, or we'll be winning, or we'll be, you know, qualified or whatsoever. And then we just let it slip. We lose focus. Happened happened too many times. It happened with the Cameroon game. Do you know what I mean? I don't think we're, we're learning from our mistakes. And it's, it's individual errors that are costing us games. Yeah, yeah, we'll come to that. I'm going to take you all the way back, Mohammed, all the way to yesterday night when you see the team come out, the lineup. It seems like it was an eternity ago since this happened. Um, what, what, what did you make of that starting eleven? He's seemingly the best team in his eyes for that game. Hmm. Well, I think we can't really complain to be honest because the back four we knew that was going to be the back four. Um, I don't think anyone had any complaints about that. Uh, everyone knew because of Shaby's form, he was going to play. Um, I think the only person out of the three in the midfield that was a bit questionable was Nabil Ben Talib, but we didn't get to see the friendlies, so we didn't know how on form he was. Um, but according to Belmadi, he must have played well in the friendlies and prepared well. Um, so that was a bit iffy. Um, it was between Ones or Belayli that was going to start. I thought Ones would start, to be honest, because he started the Togo game. And I think Belayli started the Burundi game. Yeah. Uh, I thought I thought he would have gone with Ones, but he went with Belayli. Happy with that. Didn't really have many issues. Was scared for Bonijah. I knew he was going to start because, to be honest, Slimani can't really start games, in my opinion. He, you know... He's just much better off the bench. He's more of an impact sub. Uh, we, use him, we use him more as an impact sub. So I was, I knew Bonnie Jack was going to start, but I was worried for him because we know Bonnie Jack is, he can have a good game and he can have a bad game. And we all knew Mehrez was going to start. So all in all, I don't think anyone complained about the lineup because um, we couldn't really say anything because we didn't watch the two friendlies. Um, and that was the sort of lineup we were expecting. Yeah. And I think that if, if Bruno Jai is going to play up front, it's usually with Belayli on the left. Those two, you kind of... I don't think you can have one without the other. I think they both work best when they're together because obviously they're, they're both from Wahran. They've got that chemistry five years ago. It just feels like he seems to be... If he wants to play Belayli, he plays Baghdad. It's never one or the other. I disagree because when when Bruno Jai, um After AFCON, when he didn't call up Bruno Jai, Belayli would play. Um, and he's he's done it without Bonija many many a time. So I don't know. I don't really don't really agree with that. I, I think Belayli. Belayli when he's done that, when Belayli's played without him, he's yeah. not looked as good. Mm, you can say I don't know. I th I think Belayli is the most effective player of the national team in the last four to five years. We can say. Big statement. Who who else? Who else? Benas has been big when fit. Of course, of course. But in terms of decisiveness, Belayli is always involved in the play. Um, as we saw yesterday, Belayli was the first guy to get the ball to. You know, this this is the reason why I called for him to at least be in the squad. He's able to break down def defences. Um, I don't think other players have that kind of capacity that he has. So disclaimer, Mohamed is one of the biggest Yusuf Belayli fanboys. He's always been calling for him not to start, like he said, to even just be in the squad at times when he wasn't even in the squad. Um, mm -hmm. Seeing him as sort of someone missing from the team that we need to we need to call. Obviously, not only is he in the in the squad, he's in the lineup. You must have been buzzing when you see his name in that team sheet. How do you think he played? Obviously, he couldn't play the whole game probably because of fitness. But from what you saw, was it the right call? 
Yeah, from what I saw, it was the right call. I mean, I didn't mind if Unes started because I'm a big Unes fan as well. But um, I was happy with Bellaley's performance. Um, he looked very good yesterday. He looked very sharp in the first half, combining with... I liked the the little triangle he was playing with, with Eight Nori, with uh, Ben Nasser, with uh, Bounid Jack. Obviously, he got the assist. I think he had a very good performance. And I was, yeah, really happy. It was. It's a shame that... As soon as they score the goal, uh, he got substituted because I would have liked, maybe, you know, he might, obviously he didn't have as good as a second half, but he might have, you know, him and Bonnie Jeff might have had a reaction towards the goal and be like, all right, cool, we need a goal. You know, it would have been nice to see maybe a good seven, eight minutes more of them. Um, but yeah. I think it was, they were so tired, they were sweating. Even at half time, they were sweating, they were exhausted. I think you had to take them both off. And... I think Bill looked more tired but Bunijeh was still on it I I really didn't want Bunijeh to get substituted I know Slimane is on form I know when he comes on he usually scores uh, for Algeria uh, like he did against Somalia like he did against Egypt like he did against Guinea however I just feel like the momentum was there for Bunijeh to do some to do something more in my opinion it was weird timing though, wasn't it? Because they came on just as Angola were about to kick their pen. Um, did you find that strange? Um, yeah, it was a little bit bizarre. Um, but and it wasn't Ben Talib coming off, it wasn't Benassa coming off. He went for those two. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I think I think it was a little bit strange uh, that he'd done it just before the penalty. Um, but I think because, you know, momentum wasn't going our way, we needed to change. So I think that's what Belmadi was thinking. However, I think we could have got that momentum through Bunijah and Belayli just through the uh, reaction of the goal. Um, I think then momentum would have changed anyway. Uh, I didn't think... I think if anyone was to get substituted, in my opinion, it should have been Mehrez. But he's never going to... Listen, I get the fact that he's not turned up, he's not performed, yeah. and... The reality is, particularly as the captain, he's never ever going to sub him off or not start him. We know he's going to start the next game. Yeah, but but if Belmadi wants to be considered as a top top coach, not in Africa, because so, we know he's a top coach in Africa. If he mm -hmm. wants to be considered a coach in the world, he has to drop Mahrez because Guardiola wouldn't let, did not let that happen, right? And I'm sure in European teams um, there have been big players that have been dropped from the team after a poor performance. He has had a good five games, five, six games, where he hasn't done much and he's ghosted. Um, I do think if he gets dropped, that will, you know, spur something in his head, like, I have to actually work. I have to do something. The right was missing, apart from Atal. But everything went down the left. Like you said, the eight Nori, Banasa triangle, every single thing went down the left. It was like the, we weren't really shifting the ball out to the right. I don't know why, but yeah, it seemed but like think, the outlet was the left. I think we were. I think we were. But the only thing Mares would do was, that he does well, obviously his first touch is magnificent, best in the world, in my opinion. And he'll put in that little ball for the overlap for Atta. But that's all mm. you see from Mahrez, honestly. Yeah. That's all I saw from Mahrez, that little ball. Obviously, it's, it was it, they're really good balls for Atal, but if that's all you're going to offer in the game, I'd rather you start with Ness on the right. I think I saw more dribbling from Yusuf Atal and more direct threat on that right than from Riyadh. And I don't know why, but it's like Atal doesn't want to give it to him. He'd rather run himself. He's like a winger himself sometimes, Atal, isn't he? He, just, he wants to drive all the time, but then he gets caught out of position. Yeah, he's more attacking than he is defensive. But I think... The Somalia Mozambique game, he was really good. Um, I don't know what happened this game. He he wasn't bad because a lot of people were saying he was bad and had a bad game. I don't think he had a bad game. It just just wasn't himself. He didn't seem himself on the ball, um, the way he was attacking. Um, but I don't think he was the worst player. No. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to take you back, and it's to me it seems like a long time ago. The little Belayli ball over the top. That first time finish from my dad, I'm sorry, it's like world class. It's a great finish. Uh, the overhead kick? No, no, forget the overhead kick. Even the first goal is class. 
Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. That's typical Belayli Bunajah two thousand nineteen vibes. You know, uh, goal from Wahran. You know, um, mm-hmm. world class goal. It's a great finish from Bunajah. I think I was I was surprised that he scored it because usually that's where you know, kind of, you know, doesn't do the job. Um, so I was yeah. very very happy with that. And and then Bunajah scores that overhead kick. We think he's Lewandowski. Like like he's gone. <laughs> Take, taken classes with uh, Lewandowski, but you know, I think we've been uh, robbed of one of the all time great AFCON goals. I think it's it's a shame, it's a shame that that didn't go in, and it's a shame that we didn't get the result. Because if we got the result we needed, we got that win, we'd all be talking about Belayli and Bunajah the way they play, mm-hmm. we'd all be praising them, we'd be praising the whole team, in fact. Maybe we will have some ifs and buts and maybes about certain players, but we wouldn't be reacting like this. That's why I think we need to stop thinking with emotions and just look forward, look at the positives that happened. I know the second half wasn't great, but the first half was the best performance I've seen from the African side so far in this AFCON. Mm. We played at times like City, in my opinion. We should have been more than 1-0 up, shouldn't we, at half-time? Yeah, that's, yeah. The one, that's the one reason why I was upset. Well, in the first half is that we didn't get that second goal. The thing is, we've seen, obviously, um, Egypt draw, Nigeria draw, Cameroon. Um, we're in the same boat as those teams. So it's, it's not like we're the only ones that have failed to get over the line, is it? No, but I think every Algerian can speak about this. Um, they know what I'm saying, where we're not them. We shouldn't be in that position. Yeah, you know, in my opinion, um, Nigeria have got a good, a good squad. Egypt are always disciplined and well balanced team. Um, who else uh, drew? Um, Nigeria, Egypt, Ghana lost. Ghana have got a good Even team. Worse. However, I think with the Algeria team, we've got the players and we've got the manager, and we're a, bal- a good balanced team. Really and truly, we shouldn't be drawing any games like these. Nah. It's Angola. We should be winning these games. Yeah, but uh, we did in the last AFCON, didn't we? Same problem. Yeah, same problem. We haven't learned from our mistakes, but we need to stop remembering that last AFCON because if we continue rem- remembering that last AFCON, the same thing's going to happen. We have to look at it as a fresh game, Burkina Faso, because they weren't yeah. great today. No, we'll, we'll come to that game in the after this because uh, there's a lot to talk about from that game as well. So... Second half starts, it was like a different team came out. Mm. Bentala, Benassa, uh, Ben Sabani all getting booked. As soon mm. as Bentala and Benassa are on those yellows, they couldn't commit to challenges as much as they would have liked. And mm. then all of a sudden, what is Nabil doing? Why is he hacking that guy? It's just a dumb it's, decision. It's very rash, very, very rash. Um, people are saying that he didn't know that the player was um, behind him that he didn't see the player but as a cdm you should be scanning all the time um it's very, at the end of the day that's what cost us the win um because exactly. individual angola didn't look like they were going to score nah. at all in the game um so yeah it's, it's unfortunate i mean even the right. penalty was jammy yeah yeah <laughs> i mean if 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 the ball didn't go over the line, it would have been ruled out. Um, yeah. They, they they weren't a great team. We should have won that game by it. Because I believe if they didn't score that penalty, we would have got the second and then we go, the floodgates would have opened. But as soon, of course, of course, I, I don't blame them. Of course, they're going to, you know, sit back and um, wait for us to break the lines. So it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. And then, of course... I think Ben Tyler was actually lucky to stay on the pitch. Most refs would have given a second yellow card for a challenge like that. He can he's a lucky boy. I don't think that's a yellow. Honestly. No, but you know I, what these refs are like. Yeah, of course, of course, of course we know. But we should have had okay, if we can if we talk about them, you know, they should have had the second yellow for Ben Tyler, We should have had a penalty in my opinion. For the handball. Yeah, it it didn't hit his uh chest arm, it was straight arm. So why wasn't it checked? It must have been checked, surely. Well, he was listening, but I guess they told him to play on that. But we shouldn't be surprised about these things. We know how the game is in Africa. We know that, you know, 
we don't we don't really get VAR like other teams. We know that already. We we shouldn't be relying on that. We need to be taking our chances when we have the momentum. So, it's just stupid, bro, isn't it? Because look, Angola got a pen, Faso got a pen, and when it comes to us, you know, we know that. We know that though. We know that though, and the players know that though. There's so many experienced players in that team. They should know this already. That's why it was so important to get the second goal because we knew that, you know, Angola can get any, something out of anything. Yeah. You know, we know what these refs are like. We know we we know the conditions we're playing at. So at the end of the day, we've only got ourselves to blame again. Well, I think Ben Tarlop has himself to blame. It's an individual error that's that's cost the game. He's, I think he's let the team down. He has let the team down, in my opinion. Because in the first half, uh, if we look at it, um, in terms of passing, he didn't have the best games in terms of his passing as well. Yes, he'd win the ball back, which I appreciate. However, him and Mares were the two worst players in that first half. So there was already question marks on him already. Um, so Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know why Ramiz Zerouhi didn't play because he's been looking phenomenal recently. Um, well, he should have come on as soon as one, those mids were both booked. He should have pulled one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think he should have taken off um, Bantalib or Ben Nasser a bit earlier, to be honest. Yeah. Do you think Amora, if he was available, would have made a difference in a game like that? Of course, because what Amora has is something... Others don't have in, uh, sorry, we don't have in the national team. Um, he's reliant purely on pace. He's almost like um, a player you'd think that like Mali has. Pace, and he's got a very good finish. He can dribble as well, and he's got a very good finish. We don't have anyone with pure pace. We do have players that are fast on the ball, such as Edmund Ness, Yusuf Hatta. However, we don't have someone that is just purely fast like when i mean fast fast and i really do think he would have made the difference coming off the bench or starting i'm not being funny right but when i saw calf had given man of the match to shaibi i thought it was a wind up i mean i i'm surprised yeah, this guy lasted the whole game he was he was nowhere near the best player on the pitch yeah i think with fellish ab i didn't you know blame the manager for selecting him he's been very good i've been very impressed with him in the algerian shirt because straight away he's kicked on with the national team. However, this was his first um, AFCON game. And we have to take that into consideration. He's still young. He's still learning. Yeah. But it was a bit bizarre that he was, you know, uh, not as involved as he could be in the game. Um, however... Would you, would you drop him? Yes, I would drop him. Yeah, I would as well. Purely for, the fact, purely for the fact, not that I don't believe in him, purely for the fact that there's another player in there that I think would do the job on Saturday in the heat. Is that Awa? No. It's not Badawi. The reason, the, reason why, the reason why I wouldn't go for Awa is yeah. because he's just come back from an injury and yeah. I still think he could be used as an impact sub. I really, I was impressed with him, by the way, when he came on. Um, mm -hmm. He was in our pockets. Um, you know, like the play flowed around him, to be honest. Yeah. But definitely, I want to be selected in the 11 soon, but not yet. Um, I, as you said, Bodewi, yes. Bodewi, yeah. I think people might laugh, at, might laugh at me for saying this, but Bodewi will really, you know, help us at a two o'clock game. He works hard. That boy works really hard. And he would definitely help us. Yes, for sure. It's, it's got to be the game. It's got to be now or never for Hashem. This is the game he, for him. He came on against Mozambique and changed the game. Changed the game. I think yeah. him and Belmadi's tactics put in Shaibi as a almost false nine with Amora on the left uh, really did help us. So I guess I the only other thing we... was the um, we had a three kick right at the end, and obviously mm. Mara's stepping up. Did you think he should have? Pelted that in himself. He tried to lay it off. Well, they had um, someone on the post. Um, so I think if they didn't have someone on the post, Mares would have would have had a shot. Um, but he laid it off to Shaibi. But I think with Shaibi, I don't know why he didn't put it a bit higher. Uh, it mm, was easy for quite low. Yeah. Too low, too low. Um, and then Gitoun had 
جيتونا عوار جيس كلاش سو يا واز ا جود اوبورتونيتي بس اي ريلي ونت تو سي جيتون تيك فري كيك بيكوز اي سين هيم وذ وين هي واز ات باستيا تيك كابل فري كيكس اند ذي لوك جود بس اي دونت نو اف ذيس از يو نو باور ان ذا سكواد وير محمود هاف تو تيك ايفري ثينغ او شعيبي هاف تو تيك ايفري ثينغ بس يا اي ثينك جيتون You know, deserves a chance to take free kicks because we don't really have a right-footed player that can take free kicks. Belayli is not a free kick taker, in my opinion. But like you said, Mares has a lot of power in that team. I mean, the fact that he starts every game and plays 90 minutes tells you what you need to know because he shouldn't be at this at this point. And yeah. uh, to think someone's going to take the free kicks off him, I mean, even if 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 it's on the other side, it'll, it'll probably be Mares crossing it in. So yeah, I doubt think. Talking. The reason why it's annoying is because from a neutral, when someone thinks of the Algerian national team, they would think Riyad Mahrez, Riyad yeah. Mahrez. But we know that when we didn't have Riyad Mahrez, you know, we had the players like Yasin Brahim, Sofian Fakhouli, uh, you know, we had Sofian Henni. We we have the players. Um, even when we score goals as Algeria, we, we're not reliant on Riyad Mahrez all the time. You know, yeah. we have our players. We have Belayli. We have Bonijah. Uh, we ha- we have um, Shaibi now. In the past, for Holi, um, we're not totally rely on him. So that's why I'm saying we we have we have the we have the ability to drop him because we have other players that can do a job as well. Um, it's never been about Algeria national team has never been about one player. Even the Afcon run, it wasn't just about Mahrez. He helped us a lot. Yes, got us through games. Yes. However, it wasn't it wasn't like Egypt where they're totally reliant on Mohamed Salah. Now it's improving a bit with Marmosh and um, Trezeguet yeah. and Mustafa. Yes. However, I do feel like you know he need he needs to be dropped. Not not to say that not for him to play the rest of the tournament, but for him you know just to to realize he isn't the center of the national team. There are other players that can take your place at any moment. Yeah. So obviously that means we get a point as we did in the last cup. Angola get a point today. Faso beat Mauritania one nil. It was a 96 minute pen. Bertrand Traore, very controversial pen. The whole six minutes of added time was taken up with the VAR check. So really, again, you look at the pen we could have got, and you look at this one and again. Why do these ones get checked more in depth? Um, Very tough game in the heat. So Faso now are in the driving seat. They've got three points. What result should we be aiming for on Saturday? With Algeria national team, we shouldn't even be asking this question. The goal is to get to the, the, the last group game we won. The last, yeah, I understand. I understand. We're we're you know a bit. I don't know. The the fan base is a bit emotional over the fact of what what happened last time, last Afcon. But they're forgetting that you know we have top quality players and we can change it around like this. So a win, simple as that. The thing is, the thing is, sorry, us are a good side, and you know we played them in the World Cup games and a couple of draws. Of course they're a good side. Of course they're a good side. We've drawn a lot to them. However, you know we should be aiming for a win. We shouldn't be aiming for a draw because that puts pressure on us for the last game. And we knew But that. It's Mauritania. That... I mean, come on. No, we can't say it's, it's just Mauritania. No, I'm sorry. Because oh, didn't they have? Didn't they knock out Gabon? In the qualifying, yeah. Gabon are a decent side. We should put respect on these these people. You know, At Sierra Leone. We drew to them. Mm-hmm. We we have to learn from our mistakes. It's Mauritania. Okay, they have very good players. We need to think like that. We need to win. We need to win. We need to not let let it into our heads that oh we're gonna win easily or you know we're gonna rest this player or that player let's give them some respect they've qualified every team in africa that's qualified has put up a good performance yeah so i think tunisia is gonna play now we're gonna see how namibia performs but in my eyes every single team that's qualified we have to put some respect on them yeah i mean i suppose but we we need to get something from this game don't we because if we don't It's going to be all or nothing. Of course, if we win, if we win against Burkina Faso, I can say seventy percent we've qualified for the next round. 
Four points. Four points should be enough, even if it's third. Point should be enough, of course. Um, also, we want we want a favourable draw, so uh, we'd be in the driving seat to take that first position. Yeah, and uh, what about Angola and Mauritania? What 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 would you like to see happen in that game, result wise? A draw, I guess. A draw, yeah. A draw of kind of ruins both their chances, really, doesn't it? Yeah. The thing is, we we shouldn't even be having this conversation. Like, I know it's mad, isn't it? It's like last time. <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't be having this conversation. We need to be confident. We need to have our heads held high because, like I said, that first half performance was massive. Um, mm. If we if we didn't score a goal and we came out of the Angola game nil nil, I'd be more stressed. Now that we've scored a goal, we know we can score yeah. goals. Broken it's not play. like the last Afcon nil nil against Sierra Leone. We were like, and then we lost to Equatorial Guinea. We didn't score a goal, and we're playing Ivory Coast next. Hmm. We start scoring one goal in that tournament. We've already, you know, equaled that. Um, yeah. it, it might sound, it might sound stupid, but. Um, I think the players know that they can, you know, really score some goals uh, this tournament. They've, I think, Bonajek will be will have his confidence held high because I think he's a confidence player. I think that's what I've realised from him. Um, he just needs that confidence within himself to score goals. Yeah, and he's earned the number nine back, hasn't he? Slimani won't start. It's just if it's just is he going to put a Mora up top and Belayli on the left? Look. I think, yeah, I think that's the question. But honestly, I don't mind. I don't mind if Amora starts. I don't mind if Belayli starts. Why I say that is because both of them, I think, will have it, can have an impact off the bench, you know, if it comes to the worst. Um, I, so, you know, hopefully none of them get injured before the games. Uh, that's That would be the worst case scenario. But inshallah, inshallah, you know, um, get the job done with whatever lineup that comes up because maybe we're saying that we want Mehrez to be dropped but most likely Belmadi is going to start him, right? He will play. Captain, he's going to play. Imagine, you know, after off, on the back of that performance, he's hear, heard the criticisms, you know, he puts on an outstanding performance against Burkina Faso. Please, Mehrez, do it. Inshallah, like you said. <laughs> Inshallah. Because, you know, I think every Algerian loves Mahrez. He's done so much for the badge. I don't yeah. want him to ruin his legacy. You know, everyone's talking, everyone's talking about bringing Olise in, but, you know, really, I know Mahrez is getting older, but he's still Mahrez. You know, he's still that one guy that can um, change the game in a second. Any other changes for the game then that you'd make? Obviously, we've got four players that could be suspended if they get another yellow now as well. Mm. No, I, I pretty much. So Zorokhi and Topanbalad, in my opinion, I think we we will look much better like that. I think I wouldn't have a cam for the Burkina game. I'd, no Shaibi. I'd, I'd have no Shaibi, no Awar. I'd put Budawi in there with Ben Uh and then on the left, I'd probably go with Amora just because we need fast players. Pace. See, I'd actually, I'd actually drop the lady. I'd actually Mad. drop the. It's not mad because we have a uh, Amora. I think Belayli is useful for the squad, yes, but I think Amora just tops it over. Him. I'd rather him start, but I don't mind who starts. But I'd rather Amora at this moment of time, especially because we're going to be playing at two o'clock. We need fast players. Um, I'd start Borne Jack again. There's no way Slimani is starting at two o'clock in that heat. Yeah, there's no. But the five uh, subs are going to be crucial because of the heat. There will be changes early on. They're going to have a big part to play. Yeah. And, I, and I'd have Unas starting. I'd have Unas starting. By Vamara. Just, yeah. He looked really good when he came on just because he was that uh, the, that impact player. He was that one guy that was trying to change everything. But unfortunately, he just didn't have that final pass. Yeah. Score prediction then to end it off? Against Burkina Faso, 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one, to us, obviously. Inshallah, inshallah. inshallah. What do we say? Fiha yeah. khair. Everything. Fiha Let's see what happens. But um, pleasure to have you on, Mohammed. Um, thanks Thank for coming you. on. Thank you.
And uh, yeah, let us know your thoughts on the Angola game and the upcoming Faso game in the comments down below. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.